Hello everyone and welcome to the chapter number 2 of Blender Master Course Understanding the Interface. Do watch the last two chapters of this master course series if you haven't already watched them. Now coming back, in this lecture we learn about basic interface of Blender, how to open and use different things in Blender and by the end we'll also be having our first rendered image. So as discussed in the previous chapter, this was the splash screen of Blender which appears the first time you download and open Blender and this allows us to set the theme of Blender and make some very basic settings. And if you click anywhere else on this screen, this splash screen will disappear and this screen arrangement appears which has multiple panels in it and this is called the graphical user interface of Blender. Now there are different windows in Blender where you will be working and these are called the panels or basically the editors of Blender. The major area is covered by this 3D viewport where you will be spending maximum amount of your time as it basically contains all the objects that you will animate and make different things in Blender. Then this is the outliner editor and it contains the names of all the objects that you are working on. Now this is the property panel in which you will basically edit all the properties of the objects that are present in a particular file in Blender. And this is the timeline editor which will be used while we animate different stuff in Blender. Now this is the default cube of Blender which always appears whenever you open a new file. And along with this a lamp and a camera also appear. Now you can select any of these using the left mouse button click. Now here the lamp is selected and using the left mouse button click the camera is selected. So this was about the default things that appears whenever you open a new file. And this is the tool panel of Blender which basically covers the very basic operations like moving, rotating, scaling etc. And we will learn these in our future chapters. Now you can toggle the object properties panel using the N key. And this is basically used to edit um, the basic properties of different objects in viewport very quickly. So it's time to analyze the tool panel by using the move tool, rotate tool and the scale tool. And for this you need to click on this cube here which will be the object that we are going to move. And you need to click here in the tools panel the move button. Now as you click the move button these arrows will appear on the object which are known as gizmos in blender. And if you left click on these arrows and drag it then object will also move along with it. And if you leave the left click button then the objects get relocated at that place. So these are the axes in Blender and these also represent the X, Y and Z axis. This red one is the X axis, this green one is the Y axis and this blue one represents the Z axis in Blender. Now if you want to rotate any object then you need to click here in the tools panel and then you can drag it as per the direction which you need to rotate the object. For example if you want to rotate it in X direction then you need to drag this x1 the red one here and for example if you want to rotate it this much then leave it here so this is the rotated object in the x direction similarly if you want to rotate it uh, in y direction or in z direction then you can do so using the particular gizmos now it's rotated in the z direction as well as in x direction now scaling any object is also very similar to rotating and moving it you need to click here on the scale option then if you need to scale it in Z direction, then you need to drag the blue one. So it is scaled up now. And if you want to scale it down, then you need to move it like this. Then drag it like this. Now it is scaled down. And similarly for other axes, for example, for X axis, you can scale it down in X axis as well. And this one is for Y axis. But with usage of Blender, you might observe that uh, using gizmos for moving, rotating and scaling is not convenient every time. So Blender also gives you the option to use shortcuts for moving, rotating and scaling. So for moving you can use the G key and move it anywhere you want in the 3D viewport. If you want to set a position then you need to click left but left click button on the mouse and it gets set in that position. Now if you want to rotate this in a particular direction then you need to click R button and move your cursor and it gets rotated in that particular direction. Now to set it on a particular rotation you need to left click and this is the new rotation of your default cube. Similarly to scale it the shortcut key is S key. So if you press S and then move your cursor then the object will scale up and scale down. Now to set it you need to left click like this and this is the scaled object now. Now the next thing is zooming in and into the 3D viewport and rotating it. So for that if you want to zoom in and out then you can do that by your scroll wheel. If you rotate your scroll wheel then 
you can zoom in and zoom out of your 3d viewport and to rotate it or move around the viewport you can do it by uh, pressing the scroll wheel button and moving it this will allow you to rotate the viewport or basically pan in now if you want to go up down left and right in the 3d viewport then you can do that by pressing the shift key and along with that press the middle mouse button or the scroll wheel button and if you move your cursor or basically the mouse then you can go up down left and right in the 3d viewport like this and if you leave any of the two buttons then the position will get set now if you're just a beginner or you're just starting out in blender then you might think that it's too much it's too hard or there is too much to memorize but with time these things will become a habit of yours and you will find it very easy and interesting to do the next thing is that now since everything cannot be made with just a default cube in blender so blender gives us the option to make different objects and add different objects in the 3d viewport and for this first we need to delete this default cube and we can do it by using the x key if you press the x key and press delete the object will get deleted and to set up a new object add a new object you need to click shift plus a this will give you a list of different objects that can be added in blender for example if we want to add a uv sphere then we'll click on mesh and then uv sphere and uv sphere will get added here but one question that might uh, strike your mind is that why is it appearing at the center or basically at the intersection of these two axes the reason is this 3d cursor that you can see here if i turn off the gizmos then this is the 3d cursor that you can see here whenever you add any new object in blender it gets added at the location where the 3d cursor is present and to move this 3d cursor anywhere in your 3d viewport then you can do it by pressing the shift key plus right click mouse button and the 3d cursor will get relocated but if you want to uh, get this 3D cursor back at the original position then you can do it by shift plus C and the 3D cursor will uh, get back at the center of the 3D world. Now many people find these gizmos very boring to work with and therefore Blender gives you the option to use shortcut keys for moving rotating scaling in a particular direction as well. So if you want to rotate it in a particular direction for say uh, X axis then you can press R then instantly press X also and the object will rotate only in the x-axis now similarly if you want to scale it in a particular direction say y-axis then you can press s and then y and it will get scaled up only in the y direction similarly for moving if you press g and say you want to move it in z direction then you can press z and left click then it gets uh, relocated in the z direction the next thing that we are going to explore are the modes in blender and for this i'll delete this object and add a new cube here now the different modes of blender allow you to do different operations for example if you want to edit the vertices or the edges of a particular object then you can do it only in the edit mode and not in the object mode or any other mode similarly if you want to do weight painting of an object then you can do it only in the weight paint mode and not in the object or edit mode so for different objects there are different different modes in blender and you can discover them here where it's written object mode so that cube has the option of object mode edit mode sculpt mode and paint paint mode texture paint and vertex paint mode but the most important ones are the object mode and the edit mode as you would spend most of your time working in these two modes only now to enter into the edit mode you can click edit mode here or you can also use the tab key to toggle in between object and edit mode like this as we enter the edit mode you can select the vertices of your object using the left click mouse button like this and right now we are in the vertices selection mode only and to change it to edge selection or face selection you can do it from here if you click on the second option then you can select the edges of your object like this and if you want to select the faces then you can go here and select the face mode and now you can select the faces of your object you can also do it using the shortcut keys and the shortcut keys for selecting the uh, vertices or the edge or the face selection mode are the 1, 2 and 3 keys but these keys are not from the numpad but from here in the keyboard now if you click 2 the edge selection mode will appear and if you click 3 the face selection mode will appear 1 is for the vertex selection 2 is for the edge selection and 3 is for face selection mode now to come out of the edit mode you can do it using the tab key 
now we are into the object mode again for people who have just started out working on blender and they feel that it's too boring to learn so many new things altogether you need not worry since the best way to deal with this problem is practically making something in blender and so we will start our first practical session in this chapter right now in which we will basically make this simple looking rubik's cube in this way we will also understand about adding basic colors or materials in our scene now before starting this practical session there is one more important thing that i must tell you and it's basically about saving your file i have personally experienced it many times that i am making something on blender and due to some crash or maybe some power failure blender closes and if i had not saved that work manually there is no backup and all the time gets wasted all my energy gets wasted that's because blender doesn't auto save anything so before beginning this practical session we'll first save our file for this you need to click control plus s and we'll save a file on our desktop i have made a new folder blender master course and we'll name our file as chapter 2 so now our file is saved and we can begin our first practical session of making this rubik's cube a rubik's cube's shape and structure is nothing but a cube only so we do not need to change the shape of this default cube very much and we'll begin by adding colors or materials to it to do this we need to click here in the properties editor make sure that the cube is selected and is highlighted from here you can change the material properties like the base color its metallic strength etc we'll be exploring all these in detail in the upcoming chapters but for now we we'll look at the base color option only suppose we want to change its color to red now if we select red here we observe that there's no change in the object's color in the 3d viewport the reason behind this is that we are currently in the solid mode and in blender there are four modes of viewport shading which you can change from here in the upper right corner the first one is the wireframe mode where you can only see the edges of the object in a wired form second one is the solid mode in which we are working till now the third one is the material preview and in this mode we can see the colors that we have assigned to our object and the last one is the render preview mode and in this mode you can see how your output would look like when it's ready as per the lighting and other effects you can also switch between these modes using a shortcut key that is z now you can enter any mode like this now we are in the material preview mode we have one problem here and that is we did not want to color the entire cube as red to assign different colors to different faces we need to enter into the edit mode using the tab key and now we'll select this upper face by pressing 3 for face mode and now selecting this face now we'll assign it another color by adding a new material and for this we have to click at the plus button here then we'll click at new and assign here now it has changed its color to the default white we'll change it to something like blue blue looks good on it similarly we will assign different colors to the different faces of this cube for this face we'll assign yellow color like this and for this face we'll assign some other color uh, let's assign green for this face now we have four faces ready for this face we'll assign white color and for the last face let's assign a new color let's assign it purple now although this cube has different colors on its faces but still it does not look that good that's because we need to assign more colors like in this one for this we need to increase the number of vertices so that there are more faces where we can assign more colors in the cube for this purpose we'll use the subdivide option first select all the faces of this cube for that you can use the shortcut key a to select all now right click and select subdivide click here and increase the number of cuts to 2 now it looks fine and now we'll change the color of these smaller cube faces now we'll assign blue color to these three faces for this we'll select the three of them to select them together we will press shift key and then select them like this or else you can also do one more thing that is to press the left click button and then drag it like this the three faces will be selected now we'll click at the blue material and click assign the three faces will now get assigned blue color similarly we will change the color of these three faces we'll change it to white and for these three white faces we'll change them to pink color 
Now these three faces will be selected and we'll assign them yellow color. So that's basic structure of a cube ready. Now we'll press tab to enter the object mode. To get the final render, we will get it from the view as per the camera sees it. So to enter into the camera view, press 0 on your numpad. So this is our camera view and to make it look better, we'll rotate this cube in the Z direction. Press R then Z and you can rotate it like this. And if you rotate it in X direction, then it looks something like this. In Y direction, you can rotate it like this. You can finalize any rotation which suits to you and looks good to you. Uh, let's finalize this one. I know it's not uh, looking like realistic cube. And that's because we are yet to cover a lot in Blender. We have tried to create something on our first practical session with less than 1% knowledge about Blender. But as you continue to learn and understand all the concepts, you will be able to make realistic looking animations as well. But yes, to make it look a bit more interesting, we can try one more thing. We will enter into the edit mode, click A to select all. And now we'll use a new tool called bevel. Basically, it will make the edges look a bit rounded or curved. We will be understanding this tool as well in much detail in the upcoming chapters. To use it right now, we'll press Ctrl plus B and move your cursor slightly to see its effect. And then release it using the left mouse button click. Now to fix this mismatch in colors in these edge loops, we'll change their colors by selecting all of them and assigning them a different color. To select the entire edge loop, we'll first enter the face mode by pressing 3. To select the entire edge loop, we'll press Alt and then select by left click like this and to select multiple edge loop at once we'll press shift and alt simultaneously and select the edge loop now this edge loop is also selected similarly we will select all these edge loops now Now one thing to note is that selecting them will take some time and you have to judge on your own on which face to click to select the correct edge loop. So try practicing it after this chapter ends and in upcoming practical sessions also we will be doing this again in order to master it. Now we will assign these edge loops black color so that they look interesting. So we will create a new material here. And to get black color here we will bring this down like this. And now you click the assign button. Coming back to the object mode, we observe that there are still some faces left that should be colored black. So we'll select those particular faces in the edit mode and assign them black color. For example, this face that is red colored, this should be black so that it matches with the edge loops. So we'll go to black material and click assign. Similarly, this one. Now our cube is finally ready and we'll return back to the object mode and click 0 for camera view. So now it looks more realistic than before and so we'll render it now which means that we will ask our software blender to give us the output as an image form. To check the lighting in this scene and that how the final output would look like, we'll press Z and enter into the rendered viewport. Now this one face is a bit dark because of the lighting since our lamp is located here. So the light does not fall on this face and as a result it appears to be darker. But for today we will render it as it is since we are going to have a complete chapter on lighting as per its strength, position etc. And also for our first practical session it looks simple and decent enough to render. In order to render this image we will click here on the render button then click render image. And based on the PC specification it will take the required time to render and this is our final output. Do tell me in the comments about how good your cube looks and if possible also share the link of its image if you manage to render it. Now to save this image, we'll click on image here and click save and save it at your desired location. And that's all in our chapter number 2. Our next lecture is gonna be on chapter number 3 that is editors, workspaces and themes. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press that notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming chapters. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.